Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory, to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. We definitely need to pray on this one. <laughs> Dan's like, we need to pray on this one. All right. I don't think you understand how, <laughs> how absolutely amazing what I'm about to read you is. Okay. There's not even any words to describe. So, you know, God's had Dan and I in ministry for 20 years. He, um, a year and a half, two years ago almost, he took this ministry and absolutely made it so amazing. I, we have no words to, it's all him. It's, I mean, he's just, I, I don't even know what to say. He's just amazing. God is amazing. Okay. He gave us this beautiful, amazing, wonderful team who we absolutely, they are family, you know, and this, what I'm about to read you, uh, the first one is a vision of, from a sister. Okay. And she, at the end of her vision, she's going to, oh, Andrew, oh my gosh, I'm so oh, glad. I'm glad you didn't miss this one. <laughs> you were, Holy Spirit told you. You're going to see this one. Holy Spirit told you to log on, my brother. <laughs> Wait till you hear this. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, oh my gosh. So, the first... It literally confirms every single thing that the Lord has taught us in the last two years about transfiguration and going with him and the bride and the five full of uh, five wise virgins, the five foolish virgins. I mean, everything heart healing and deliverance, deliverance, being prepared, allowing him to create the clean heart, allowing, to, allowing him to uh, circumcise your heart. It confirms everything through every scripture. So I want you to sit back, grab a cup of coffee, cup of tea, and listen to our Lord speak to your heart. Praise the Lord. I had to go get popcorn for this one. <laughs> it is so beautiful. Okay, here oh, we yeah. go. Two visions of the New Jerusalem. Okay, so the, it's, the first one is from the sister. Um, I'm going to skip down to the vision. Okay. On November 18th, 2020, I had a brief vision of the New Jerusalem. Like the recent visions, when I saw the two sons, I was at my sister's in Montana. She looked out the window and said, it's the New Jerusalem. I looked out the window and saw, and just a very, just very briefly, but indeed it was there. And it looked much like the picture I have attached in the vision and the vision ended after that. And this is the, it's like a, like a, um, castle, right? I had another vision several years ago of the New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven in the distance. It also looked much like this picture. I could see Yahushua in front of me with a young girl, maybe six or seven years old. They were standing on a cloud and, and he had his arm around her and was pointing to the New Jerusalem off in the distance and a vision. There is a connection with the bride and the New Jerusalem. And then she gives some Bible verses. And for the sake of, because this is really long, I'm going to read you the verses, but then you can go back and read them only because it's very, very long. Okay. Uh, Revelation 3.12, Revelation 21.2, Revelation chapter 21. Okay. I also have a hard copy of a word, the gate called beautiful by Peter Kirstein. Now, I'm not going to read the rest of this because we're going to skip over to this word. Whew. Holy Spirit, I ju we just come to you right now, Lord. We just, we ask you as we read this word to your children, to your, to your bride, Lord, let it sink into their hearts and let them, oh my gosh, Lord, let them feel your spirit as strongly as the, as you, as we did, Lord. Oh, touch their hearts and help them see the amazing love and beautiful peace and truth that is in this word. 
and we praise you and we thank you thank you jesus we praise you and we thank you for this word in jesus name amen amen okay god's living portals as received by holy spirit this is only from october okay from the lord through peter kirstein give god your everything and he'll make you a window in heaven to bring his love and glory to the earth. Luke 17, verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God comes not with observation. Neither shall they say, see, see here or see there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. When God gave me this prophetic revelation, he led me to Psalm 24. When I looked at the Logos written script, the Rhema word spoke, um, I'm sorry, the Rhema spoken word of God struck me so hard and with such glory in my spirit that I couldn't touch my Bible for a few days Whoa. because the power of the message. Yeah. I had to meditate for a few days on it and then ask for the grace and utterance to put it into writing. Psalm 24, a Psalm of David. We now come with the following kingdom declaration. The earth is the Lord's in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strongly and mighty, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift up you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. In verse 3, the question is asked, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? This hill is none other than Mount Zion, the mountain and kingdom and Jerusalem of God, <laughs> the Lord's holy habitation, Hebrews 12, 22. Yeah. But you are come unto Mount Zion and unto the hill, I'm sorry, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. The thing is that so few Christian people realize that we are to go through a serious sanctification, cleansing, and preparation to become this living walking, moving tabernacle and dwelling of the Most High. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. How will you become His resting place, His holy habitation and dwelling if you keep following the desires of your carnal nature? Does He not say, the following in 2 Corinthians 6, 14, be you not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness and what partnership has light with darkness and what harmony has Christ with Belial 
Or what part has he that believes with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be you separate, says the Lord. And touch not. Don't touch it again, you guys. Touch not the unclean, the unclean thing. And then, and I will receive you. Yeah. And will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Whew. Jesus was clear when he said in John 14, 23, if a man loves me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loves me not keeps not my sayings and the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. Understanding then, beloved, that if you desire to become this abode and dwelling place of the Lord, then you need to heed the following scripture in 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. The practical application of these truths is to cry out in desperation on your knees before him and ask the Lord to fulfill his promise. In 1 Thessalonians 5.22, abstain from all appearance of evil, all, all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calls you, who also will do it. Only a perfect, all-powerful God can accomplish such an awesome work in a surrendered people who have chosen to take up the cross and follow Christ unto death of their former way of life into the glory of God through a powerful resurrection. For it is written in Philippians 2.12, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. The secret is to stop resisting and allow him to do his work in us because he is the builder of all things. We need to stop going our own way, doing our own thing. How will the Lord build his house if we refuse to submit to his ways? We are called to become a Jacob generation. And to explain this Holy Spirit revelation, we need to go back and read again from Psalm 24. We dealt with the question asked in verse 3, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who may stand in his holy place? Then we find the requirements in verse 4. He who, has clean, he who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob 
the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. God is raising up a people in whom these truths will find its cult. Oh, this is so amazing, guys. Let me take a sip of water. I just have a sip of water. Hold on. God is raising up a people in whom these truths will find its complete fulfillment. And they are known as the bride of Christ, the sons of God, those that follow him wherever he leads, his true disciples that have been disciplined in the ways of their master. The end time body of sold out believers through whom and in whom the glory of God will be revealed. This is the first fruits, guys. Yes, indeed, it shall be as the prophet Malachi predicted in chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, I send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom you seek, shall suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, behold, he cometh, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, and they shall offer unto the Lord offerings in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old, and as in, the, and as in ancient days. Psalm 24, 6. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Why is Jacob's example chosen? It's because prophetically, his encounter with God at Bethel is a type and shadow of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Andrew, pay close attention. Wait till you see how much is confirmed in this. I just had to pause and say that. Genesis 28.10 And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran. And he lighted on a certain place and tarried there all night. Because the sun was set and he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows. And lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And I'm going to say our DNA. That's right. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon you lie, to you I will give it, and to your seed. And your seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. <laughs> and in you, and in your seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed and behold I am with you and I will keep you in all places where you go and I will bring you again into this land for I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken of I would um sorry until I have done that which I have spoken of to oh, I'm so sorry <laughs> Until I have done that, which I have spoken to you of. There we go. And Jacob awakened out of his sleep. And he said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid 
And he said, how dreadful is this place? That um, This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city was called Luz at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house, and all that you shall give me, I will surely give the tenth to you. I will surely, this just hit my spirit, I will surely give the tenth to you, the first fruits, 144,000. Has the Lord not also been just as faithful to us as we followed him where he leads? Has he not always been with us? Has he not also persevered? Or I'm sorry, has he not also preserved and kept us until now? Has he not also faithfully fed and clothed us as with our forefather, Jacob? God wants to establish your life as Bethel, as a gate of heaven. Bethel means house of God. Are we not called to be build up, built up as living stones into a spiritual temple, tabernacle and habitation of the Lord our God? Did Jesus not declare it in Luke 17, 21, that the kingdom is within his true followers? Within. Within. In Psalm 24, 7, we read, Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. I was fellowshipping with a prophet, friend of mine, a while back, and suddenly the Spirit of God spoke powerfully through her and revealed to me that the Bride of Christ is the gates of the city of God, through whom he is going to enter. In her, surrendered to him, she becomes the city, the gates, the Jerusalem and habitation of God. Exactly as God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Also very interesting to note that in Revelation 21, 21, and the 12 gates were 12 pearls. And I just want to say 21, 21, 12, 12. Get it backwards? Amazing. 12, the number 12 means the governmental structure administration and operation of the ruling kingdom of God through a mature overcoming people that will rule and reign with Jesus as kings and priests, the first fruits. Wow. In Matthew 13, the Lord spoke of the following again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking fine pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. 
did Jesus not pay the price by giving up everything to purchase us with his precious blood? We are indeed to him that pearl of great price. The Lord also revealed to me that this temple, tabernacle, excuse me, and habitation of God is raised up in the same manner and order as the temple of King Solomon. I need a sip of water. In it, we find a pattern as we read in 2 Chronicles 5.1. Thus, all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place, for all the priests that were present were sanctified that then the house was filled with a cloud, cloud of witnesses, guys. That then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. We are seated in heavenly places, the cloud of witnesses. Do you understand where this is, the cloud of witnesses? This is what the Holy Spirit gave us while we were reading this. Amazing. As with Jacob at Bethel, a people yielded and laid themselves down on the rock, Christ Jesus, as God said to me, the principle of yielding oneself to the rock opens the portals of heaven and you become the gate of heaven through whom he will enter to shake this final generation and receive the end time harvest of souls. I'm going to read that one more time. <laughs> he will enter to shake this final generation and receive the end time harvest harvest of souls. God showed me the open door through which the sons are about to enter. We're about to enter. Please compare the letter to the church of Philadelphia. And after we're done, I'm going to read that scripture to you. Wait till you see what the Lord showed us about Philadelphia. Oh my gosh. Uh -huh. Please compare the letter to the church of Philadelphia in Revelation 3 chapter or Revelation chapter 3 verses 7 through 13 to Isaiah 26. There is much that agrees and collaborates in these two scriptures about the prophetic time this prophetic time. He opens doors that no one can shut. He sets an open door before us in Revelation 3 because we have kept the truth and persevered through our trials which has purified us and qualified us to enter into the bride chamber through what? The key of David. And this key, this is God's key. Glory to God. Through the key of David. And this key is the, this key is the heart of worship. And thanksgiving, and there is no greater worship to offer than an obedient heart. Oh my gosh, so much confirmation for this ministry. I can't even, oh my gosh, it's amazing. The door for him as the king of glory to enter in now is the heart of the surrendered bride. In other words, our hearts are the gates through which he will enter in. And he is the gate through which the bride enters in through this union of love. We become one with him and each other as that one body 
prophesied in John 17. Wow. Then notice in Isaiah 26, the decree goes forth that says, open the gates that the righteous nation that keeps the truth may enter in. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> in Revelation 3, he promises that he will write on us the name of the city of God, the new Jerusalem, which means the bride as God's eternal dwelling place is that city. In Isaiah 26, it is declared, I need a sip of water. Sorry, guys. It is declared that we have a strong city. We have waited for him through his judgment on our lives, through which God has purified us. Verse 8 of Isaiah 26. The same as 2 Thessalonians 1, where the bride is commended for her faithful endurance through his judgment and purification of her. Then it talks about when he comes in that day to be glorified in his people. Then in verse 20 of Isaiah 26, God calls the bride into her chamber until the indignation is passed. This is none other than the passing through that open door of covenant protection that is set before her. The same as the five wise virgins that went in to meet the bridegroom. This same event, transfiguration, of the marriage and release were prophesied in Joel 2 because it is through the prepared bride that the latter rain outpouring shall occur. The same thing is mentioned in Revelation 3 where God declares, I will keep you from the hour of trial, first fruits. We are in a time, and I, I put first fruits on the end, obviously. We are in a time where the sons of God who has followed the Lord wherever he leads will be caught up exactly as John declared in Revelation 4.1. After these things, I saw a door standing open in heaven. The first voice that I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here and I will show you what must happen after this. Once this had happened, we will operate from the throne room, which is the realm of constant revelation. Wow. We will then realize what it truly means to reign with him as all of creation will see him in us. We in him. And he in us. This is that. Oh, oh, glory to God. This is that wheel within the wheel. In Ezekiel. As the corporate company of overcomers. Move in sync with the Lord. As his spirit moves. It will be like a divine dance of love. As he said to me from the throne. <clears throat> The essence of worship is I am the musician and the composer. You are the yielded instrument in my hands that I play and let your and let your life your life is the music and you are the eternal song I will sing to my father. 
The Holy Spirit leads the dance. So let us make some music, Bride of Christ. Oh, glory to God. Mm. The gate is called beautiful. Jesus spoke from his throne to me while I was on the phone with a sister in America and said something very special and precious is about his, there's something very special and precious about his bride. I was telling my sis that God said to me that this will be a nameless, faceless generation without religious titles because all, because all of the focus shall only be on the Lord for no flesh will ever again glory in God's presence. I prophesy to the bride who have paid the price and are still paying the price in the fires of purification unto death of self. Creating that clean heart, guys. Allowing him to circumcise your heart. As we are presenting our bodies a living sacrifice unto the Lord that the following scripture is about to be fulfilled in us as one body under the headship of Christ because he shall suddenly come into his living temple of tried precious living stones. Yes. Wow. Colossians 3. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affliction on things above. I'm sorry, set your affection. Uh, set your affection on things above, not on the things of the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. This glory is the light coming to us in Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people but the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall, see, shall be seen upon you. Jesus said to me, I will hide you in the essence of my end time glory, that I shall be as a blinding light in the face of your enemies. Yes. The Lord just said about the fact that his hidden ones shall be known and spoken of as were said of Peter and John in Acts 4.13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ordinary men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. That they had been with Jesus. The Lord said to me that the Lord said to me that he calls his bride the gate called beautiful. Because the bride of Yeshua is not only the city, habitation, Jerusalem of God, but she's also the gate that will bring him in. He is coming by his spirit through the heart of his surrendered bride, the first fruits, to minister healing and salvation and redemption to the needy, as in the account of Peter and John at the gate called beautiful. Acts 3. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being in the ninth hour and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. 
who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked for alms. And Peter fastening his eye, fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter, sorry, then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I, such as I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked, entering with him into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he who sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto them. I was fellowshipping with a prophet friend of mine uh, a while back, and suddenly the Spirit of God spoke powerfully through her and revealed to me that the bride of Christ is the gates of the city of God through whom he is going to enter. In her surrender to him, she becomes the city, the gates, the Jerusalem and habitation of God. Exactly as God says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Also, very interesting to note that in Revelation 20, 21, 21, and the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Hmm, we read this once already, didn't we? I, that's okay. I think we're re he's repeating it. 12 means the governmental structure, administration, and operation of the ruling kingdom of God through a maturing, maturing, like get this right here, maturing, overcoming people that will rule and reign with Jesus as kings and priests. That's the first fruits. In Matthew 13, the Lord spoke the following again. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking fine pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Did Jesus not pay the price by giving up everything to purchase us with his precious blood? We are indeed to him that pearl of great price. The Philadelphian open door of the overcomer speaks of the heart of worship through a fully surrendered life. Jesus is the door through whom his bride shall enter because she followed him wherever he leads and her heart is the door by which Christ shall enter because she is the Jerusalem habitation, and the city of her God. When he came to knock, she resisted him not, but allowed the Spirit of the Lord to intimately commune with her by becoming one with him. She ate his flesh and drank his blood, which means she embraced, oh my gosh, she embraced the sanctification of the word of God through obedience to produce the life of Christ within her. And she partook of his cup through a life of self-denial and allowed the spirit of God to work a full redemption into her through the circumcision of the cross of the overcomer. Oh my gosh, every possible confirmation of everything. Everything God's taught me, everything he's had me teach you, I, it's just amazing. Therefore, 
the bride of Christ, shall come forth suddenly to be caught up through a glorious resurrection into the freedom of the fullness of her God to dwell in the upper regions of his celestial glory as with Enoch, as a kingdom forerunner. God showed me these things through many glorious encounters to declare it unto you. We come through a long drawing and courtship of the bride out of the outer court of the flesh. Through the inner court healing. Oh my gosh, hear that? Do you hear that? Through the inner court healing and cleansing ministry of the Holy Spirit. And now we are in the prophetic time of being caught up behind the veil, the wall of color, guys. To find our permanent dwelling place in the heavens, in oneness with our God. This corporate event is not our being gathered after the time of the tribulation, which Jesus spoke about in Matthew 24. Because first he shall fulfill the writings of the prophets by which he must first suddenly come to his temple to empower us to complete God's end time harvest and the time of the Gentiles. The bride of Christ have been trained and raised up to be a warrior bride on whom the ends of the age is come. She shall plunder hell and populate heaven and be sent into the harvest fields to rescue and deliver the children of the final Pentecost for whom she, sha for whom she has travailed. She is the corporate temple of living stones in whom the fullness of the deity shall manifest because she poured herself out into the death of self. She shall be the fulfillment of the Sermon on the Mount, a kingdom walker and holy habitation of the Lord her God. The nations of the world shall witness the greater glory of the latter house manifested in her so that when the vials of God's wrath do fall upon this generation, everyone shall be without excuse. Wow. Wow. Now, I've got one more thing to read you. Revelation chapter 3. This is a revelation that's... You think that knocked your socks off? Wait till you hear this one. And unto the angel... And I want you to think... All right, I'm going to start right here. I want you to think second rounders. Okay? These are the ones that are left here to be refined in the fire of tribulation. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis... Right. These things saith he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou has received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shall not watch, I will come as a thief. I will come on thee as a thief and thou shall not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments 
and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the tribulation, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Now, I want you to think of the first fruits. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, the first fruits, write, These things saith he, that it that is holy he that is true he that hath the key of david he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth i know thy works behold i have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it for thou hast little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which says they are Jews and they are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee because thou has kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear to hear, let him let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Amen and amen. Glory to God.